All right, hello YouTube. So in this video, we're going to be going ahead and debugging an, a software that has an anti-debugger inside of it. So what that means is basically when I run this without a debugger, it's going to show me debugger not present good job. And when I run this inside a debugger, it's going to show me something different, which goes along the lines of debugger found, please remove it. So we're going to be trying to bypass this in this video because I cannot really crack a software if it has like this anti-debugger feature. So if you guys enjoy this video at any point, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to my channel. If you guys learn anything new, make sure to leave a comment. If I miss anything, if I like act dumb in any part of the video, just make sure to remind me in the comments. And yeah, with that being said, let's roll the intro and let's start the video. All right. So starting with this executable, we're going to open this with, okay, no, we're going to open this with x64 dvg. This is a very very famous debugger i'm pretty sure you guys know about this this is the starting point i'm gonna add a breakpoint over here and for the next breakpoints i'm actually gonna go with a string search real quick so these are the two strings debugger not present good job and debugger found please remove it other strings are not really relevant to us these are long strings. In the past video, I mentioned these as paths or something. I don't know. But yeah, these are long strings. So my bad for that. Uh, there's nothing significant to us rather than these two strings. So I'm going to focus on these two. We're going to focus on this one to be precise. Debugger found, please remove it. We're going to check how this is called. Uh, if I go to this and I just press G. Okay, there's no flow chart. If I go to this once again, debugger not present. If I press G, okay. So after this, this is asking for a get as function, which is basically like getting a string off of your keyboard. And then after you input a string, this is leaving and this is returning. So this is basically just going offline. Um, okay, there we go. Yep, there we go. Is debugger present? This is a function that is being used to determine if the executable is running inside a uh, debugger. Now, how this function works is I don't really know. So we are going to go ahead and Google this real quick. Is debugger present function? There we go. We're going to read about this and then we're going to read about the internals as well. Okay. Returns a Boolean value. The return value is, if the return value is non-zero, the process is running in the context of a debugger. So this is what's happening if the, if the process is inside a debugger, it's returning a non-zero -value, non value in the register of the CPU. If the process is not returning, if the process is not running in the context, in the context of a debugger, the return value is zero. If the return value is zero, the process is not running inside a debugger. And going into the internals, no, I do not want to buy a membership. Okay. Right. So this is how I'm going to guess this is how this is coded as well. Right. Kernel 32.dll implements that. If you try to open kernel that you deal ID, then you go to control plus seven search for is the error. You can see this. Ah, I see. So this is like a flag. Until now, we can follow the jump right, but it actually doesn't reach us to the real implementation. So this is like a this is like checking the system flags for any sorts of debugger. The function looks simple, but it does its work. So at first it moves GX60 into RX register, and then now RX points to PEB, so it takes this value. PEB is, I think it's like a flag thing, right? I'm gonna get, yeah. So it takes this value and offsets the PEB plus two to get into being debug field. As I'm not on X64, GSA refers to the segment register points to PEB, thread environment block. On X32 based systems, it's FS, but what are TEB and PEB? So TEB is kernel data structure, which contains all the information related to the thread. 
similarly pv but pv contains information about the whole process so it is checking the process it is not checking the thread so i'm guessing this is a process check so what this function basically does is if the process is running in the context of a debugger it's going to return a non-zero value which is a one value and if it is running inside a debugger it's going to return a zero value uh that is how basic boolean works so reading further we can see the we can see it's at address and the pv is at okay now this can be different for all the machines based on machine types and builds being debugged all right there we go so this is a pv so these are like the machine flags for example if your software is being debugged this flag is going to go yes and this function is just simply getting that yes value off of that function right um so if it is getting that value from the function which basically means okay so if that is true i can add a breakpoint over here with f2 first of all i can check the flow chart for this yep there we go so if the value is non-zero the green line gets executed which is debugger found please remove it and then it goes to the kill function and if the debugger is not found this goes straight into the debugger not present good job it asks for an input then it kills itself so yeah this is basically what we have to bypass over here so we have to make sure that this always goes into the red segment and not in the green segment so somehow i have to make the value of ex non-zero every time this is getting executed uh okay the start point is hit i don't know where the okay there we go i might be sleepy because it is 120 am so yeah just bear with me yep there we go a one value into the ex register this is what the article was talking about it is a non-zero value and it is it signifies that the is debugged flag is getting triggered somehow uh we might need to bypass that somehow if i go uh if i go with a zero is this gonna work it is not gonna work because it's checking the it's checking the uh the process the peb thing instead of checking the register value right okay so what we, what we can do here now is change the value somehow somehow force it to always return a zero what that means is i can go like this i can search for okay first of all i can check all the functions that are calling this because i might be really dumb and i might just miss a few i have to see all the calls because they might be like spoof is debugger present functions in this code so yeah is debugger yep there's a single there's a little single call to this function and this is going to this jumping to another pointer this is jumping to another pointer and okay here we go the function so what this is doing is this is basically moving whatever this value is we read, we read about this this is the value that is being extracted from the peb flag from the being debugged flag from peb so this is that value and this is being moved into mo sorry ex so this value is moved, is being moved into ex now this value is one if the process is inside a debugger which is right now so right now the value of this is one what we can do is simply remove this go with a zero okay and we can close this now if we run this um the breakpoint gets hit we go ahead and we have an error right the error is at line okay the memory address this now this is adding this value the cl or the c1 value whatever this is i think this is cl yeah this is cl it is adding the value of cl into this pointer now what is this pointer oh i see this is the error um there's no address to this pointer like so what we can do here is 
there's an error in this line, right? We can go ahead, change this to something. For example, I can go with movex comma zero. Now I can go movex one. Yep, let's go with that. <laughs> so that's that's literally going to cancel our previous attempt. We are going to go with a zero. Move ex zero. Okay. So I'm moving a zero value into ex two times. Now let's see if this works. Debugger not present. Good job. There we go. So that is how we bypass a basic anti debugger or a debugger check. What else? One more thing that we can do with this function. It it looks weird. We can go with nop. Nop just nop the entire thing until it hits a return. Yep, there we go. The return function. So now what this function is doing? It's basically adding a value of zero into ex or moving a value of zero into ex. Not adding. My bad. It's a move function. So it is moving a value of zero into the ex register, which is being checked again. If the value of this register is zero, this string is shown. So yeah, these are the patches, and yeah, that is how you bypass an a debugger check and anti debugger. So if you guys like this video, if you guys just learned anything in this video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, drop a comment, and also press the bell notification since I've been live streaming on YouTube for some time now. And yeah, I plan on live streaming a bit more. So if you guys just want to see me live, come talk to me. Um, if you guys want to ask me something, if you guys, if you guys just want to see me suffer live. <laughs> that's that's your time so yeah uh until the next video i'm gonna get you guys next time see ya